Let's talk about slow cookers. Shall right. we? I saw so many kids really at the bus excited. stop with their parents, and it just, it was so adorable. It's a, I love watching a businessman at the bus stop with their ties on all, all nice and just getting their kids ready for school, because it's great to see them, like, in a different element, you know what I mean? So cute, it's and all adorable. the kids had, like, their, their new outfits. I remember the days. Although, I did see a picture online of someone who's really happy, a kid happy for his first day of school, and then after school, he's like this. <laughs> it was a long day for him. Long but day. slow cookers are, if you haven't really, like, if you have one in your basement, you don't use it, you probably should. Pull it out. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll see that it can change your life, especially when you have those busy days when the kids are back to school and you're at work. Then so, forget it. here to show us a great <laughs> slow cooker recipe is our friend, personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. This is your slow cooker. This is my slow cooker. Also, your best friend. Yeah, apparently, yes. No, this <laughs> is, this, this is, because a lot of times you think of slow cookers as just a winter thing, a soup or a yeah. stew. But you just hit that nail on the head. Everybody's back in school. All of a sudden, our lives have gone from, oh, it's summertime to, oh, my God, summer's over. And meal, meal planning, and just you want something that's going to be so much easier in your life. Mm -hmm. And making dinner can be just that. You walk home from a long day at work with the kids, and you, it's ready. It, you it, take it, off the lid, and The it's best ready. part is when you walk into the house smelling the aroma. You get home, it, it's a double whammy. You smell the aroma, and you say, ah. Oh and then you eat dinner. Exactly, I mean, how easy is that? And this way, again, especially now that we're back in school, the, the new schedules are, aren't even quite internalized yet, and, and it's all panic. So uh, <laughs> even if, you know, if your kids are in kindergarten or, or end of high school, it's a panic. So this way, this can take one bit of panic out of your life. Perfect. Now, what's the first step? Obviously, you need to get your slow cooker out. Get the slow cooker out and, you know, dust around it if you need to do that because it's probably <laughs> had the summer off. Yeah. And, but here's the thing. There are a couple of things that, that uh, I, I, I thought about in, in coming up with this recipe. And one of them is uh, so many slow cooker recipes do not take the whole day to cook. And you want this to take the whole day to cook because you don't want to come home and, and the dinner was ready four hours ago and it's just kind of falling apart and it's all dried out. Right. So you want something with a lot of liquid in it, a lot of moisture in it. And another thing I also did, this is a chicken cacciatore, but I added balsamic vinegar to it to give it a nice little Ooh. thing. So it's a little different from most cacciatores, but I went with bone-in chicken breast. And the reason I went with bone-in is because, number one, it's a little bit uh, less expensive, but also it'll cook longer. When you've got the bone in there, the food takes longer to cook. That oh. buys you the extra time to have this cook longer. Well, because that's mm -hmm. always my complaint with the slow cookers, is the wife and I, you know, we both work similar hour jobs, so we're out of the house for eight hours a day, but all these recipes are six hours or four hours in there, so I don't want a shriveled up piece of chicken when I get home. Exactly, and that's why I took a, a recipe, because uh, this called for, uh, most of them call for boneless thighs or boneless breasts, six hours and we wanted more time. So that's why I went with the bone in. And also, another advantage of that, not just the time, you're gonna get a deeper flavor from this because of the bones in there. Great. And so all of it's just uh, gonna work out to your advantage. Yes, and it's great for uh, people on a budget too. Because yep, it's more it, exactly. Expensive. It, because speaking of a budget, this whole meal, uh, and the chicken was on sale, uh, the whole meal uh, for, it, it, this is at least four people, maybe even six, uh, came to less than $15. Wow. So, uh, actually much less than that, I think it was closer to 12 And that's usually how much it costs for one entree when you go out to eat. So this exactly. is a great way to make a, a delicious meal for your family. Exactly. So, uh, the rule of thumb for uh, making, uh, uh, for cooking something like this, is you want all the liquid and the heavier ingredients first before you put the chicken in. And okay. another really cool hint here is it calls for, uh, a lot of people put flour in. I like to put in tomato paste to help thicken it. Uh, and one great way to get this out of here, open Whoa. the can at both ends, just push it in there. You just blew my mind. That, you know, I don't use tomato paste just because I don't like taking it out of the can. you have to have a miniature spatula. Yeah, you can exactly. Have whole thing. Too much work. And sometimes there's just, a, so cool. there's just a little bit in here. Uh, you can either scrape that. Sometimes it comes out completely clean. Yep, it, th isn't that the, the hint of the day? Wow, hint of the week. It's yeah, in the running. I exactly. We'll reveal the winner on Friday. Oh, please do. I, <laughs> and I understand the winner gets a new Mercedes. Well, you know, I think you're mistaken. Or a new ca Cadillac. Or a new well, Cadillac. That, that's thing. right. Thank you. I'll give you a thank you. So. I like to mix up the ingredients. Now, it looks like there's not going to be all that much liquid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now put in some of these other ingredients. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in the mushrooms. I'm putting in, I've already put oregano in with onions. And garlic. And garlic. Yes, please. And I've got some pepper here. And if you could uh, put in a, a little bit of salt. Just not all in. of this? No, just a, a few pinches because you can always add more later. That's now, right. Then chicken on top. I'll put the chicken on top. And here's why. Because it's going to take a while because I'm setting this on low for the heat to come up. This buys you even more time 
for when the heat gets to the chicken and starts to cook oh, it. Oh, so now, even though it's not covered in sauce, because see, for me, I figured if we put it on top, it would dry out. Now, here's the thing, and here's the secret they never tell you in slow cooker school. Yeah. Is <laughs> that this is going to be covered in sauce when all is said and done. Because everything cooks down. It not only does it cook down, but uh, there's a lot of liquid that's coming out of the mushrooms. This would be some liquid coming out of the chicken, liquid coming out of everything. And so from about, uh, I'm going to say, less than uh, about 32 ounces of liquids, that's a quart, we're oh, going to wow. get double that. Uh, All right. When, when this on, so now it looks like you, you know. Uh, gee, don't you want something to cover Let's that say, up? It looks terrible right now, but I'm sure it's going to taste <laughs> great don't in eight hours. Why? Thank you, Seth. <laughs> I'm it looks glad. Like, no, but it no, looks like it's going to be delicious in about eight hours. Oh, exactly. exactly. And also another a, a quick advantage of this is a lot of slow cooker recipes have you do browning, uh, sautéing onions and things like that beforehand. You want to skip that step. Again, your life is a little bit in mayhem right now. Kids yeah. are back in school. Yeah. Or even if you don't have kids in school, make your life mayhem to make this worthwhile. <laughs> but it's just uh, it's one stop, one one pot. You don't have to do anything else. Less cleaning up, less time. That's I what I it. want. And you know, I also have to say, when I use my slow cooker, I get liners. So then you don't even have to clean your slow cooker. You just take the liner out and throw it away. So exactly. Those are great tips There's so many well. time saving tips yeah, involved. Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of time and money today. And now later in the show, we're going to make a little side dish to go with this. Yeah, we're going to do an orzo side dish that's very fast while you're getting mm. this ready. That'll That'll just a couple of steps and that'll take care of itself. Man, I just got easy. I can't believe we're talking about slow cookers, which means the weather is going to be getting cooler. Mm. Right? Don't, don't, don't say that. I know, you're jinxing it. You're because jinxing it. we don't usually use these in the summertime. I know, but it's because it's back to school. That's why we're making it. Well, I'm kind of excited about comfort food, though. That means that it's going to get a little chilly, fall, uh, cider. Here's the thing I don't think it's this week because I was checking uh, the morning news, 22 News Storm Team Meteorology. We are back in the kitchen with personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. So earlier in the show, we made that chicken cacciatore, mm. which is simmering nicely in the slow cooker. Yes, it is. And now we're going to make a side dish to go with it. What yes. are you making? Uh, what I'm doing is the easiest thing in the world. You see, I just put in some olive oil into the warm pan, some garlic. And it's orzo with spinach, and we're going to finish it with some Parmesan cheese. Now, orzo, it's like a hybrid rice pasta. No, combo. it's not, but good try. Well, I, you know, it looks, it looks see, like rice. It, it, it's a pasta. It's a pasta. It's a complete pasta. So that's why it's a hybrid. It, okay, then it's a hybrid. I accept <laughs> that. It, see, that's the thing. A lot of people think it is rice. And we just move this out of the way. They think it's rice because it looks like rice, and it's got a nice uh, pasta y. Uh, mouth feel to it, but it's completely pasta. It's as much pasta as spaghetti or, or a rigatoni or, or penne. But like I said, it looks like as you can yeah. see right there. Don't try and eat it, you'll chip a tooth. Okay. But so, I, I, I noticed that you just put uh, the olive oil and garlic in there and then you threw it right in there. There's no water. Not yet, because what I've done is I'm also stirring this around like similar to a rice, like you do with a peel off when you throw the rice in after the vegetables. I'm just coating each bit with just a little bit of olive oil on there just so it'll help uh, stay separate and not as clumpy in the pan. Mm -hmm. Now, if you browned it a little bit, would that be helpful in any way? Or? Uh, it might help with the color, but again, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, and again, that's a step you can skip, but if you do it, it'll just help with the look. So it, 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 that's perfectly fine to do. Now I've got here some, uh, this was frozen spinach that I just thawed out. You can buy it in the brick uh, in the frozen section. And that's how high you can hear the pan is because that's wet. And now I'm going to be putting in some chicken stock. Oh. Now, instead of the water. Instead Brilliant. of water. And. But it's measured out perfectly. Is this going to absorb it like it like we would like rice would? Or? Exactly, and that's a big difference from uh, cooking uh, pasta. Is that you're not draining it afterwards. It's going to absorb all that liquid, and you do it two to one, two parts liquid. So in this case, I use chicken stock. You can go with vegetable stock. You can go with water uh, to one part orzo, and I've turned it up to high and. That'll be ready in no time. Bring to That's a boil, it. then turn it to turn low it down and let it simmer. And let it simmer, because what's going to happen is the pasta is going to absorb all the water. And if you usually when you, uh, if you're just going to cook the pasta and have it as a side, uh, you would strain it and you have at least two, maybe uh, two and a half times as much water in there as if you were boiling spaghetti. But I just wanted to demonstrate while we were talking how fast it is to put that together. Yeah. Because that took less than five minutes of preparation to put that together. One thing I want to emphasize is when you buy the spinach, you can buy uh, spinach in three ways. You can buy it frozen in a block like we see. Uh, and say you come home and decide to make it, uh, what you want to do is just take that whole block out of the package, put it in a big bowl of water, cold water, and let it sit. And while you're getting everything else ready, uh, that'll thaw out. Uh, if you find you go to it still a little bit frozen, just break it up into pieces because it's really thawing quickly. Mm -hmm. And that way you don't have to plan ahead. 
or their Spanish, Spanish, like that's a combination of spinach in a package. Oh, a Spanish <laughs> spinach. spinach. I love buying that. It's Spanish spinach, yeah. Spinach in a package, but it's looser. And so, I love that stuff. And you don't even have to thaw that. You can just throw it in because uh, it's not one big brick that's got to thaw. It'll thaw very quickly once that comes to a boil. Very or you cool. can use fresh spinach. And the advantage of fresh spinach is uh, it turns everything green. It's really cool to look at. <laughs> Especially if you've got little kids and back to school week, they're going to look at, ooh, cool food. It's, your, it's like the green ketchup. Green. But yeah. Exactly. Very cool. Well, but, We'll let that sit for like let that 20 sit. minutes, 15, it, 20 uh, minutes? Uh, it takes about 15 minutes or so, and mm -hmm. then it'll be done. And then uh, as you're getting the dinner ready, uh, settling down the kids, doing whatever, as you get ready to eat, that'll be ready because you'll also have your slow cooker chicken, uh, which is ready to go as well. We're going to finish that ah, and then yummy. this up. And then later in the show, we're going to plate and eat these delicious dishes. Mm -hmm. Looking I think forward so. to that, Chef Bill. All right, now. Welcome back to Mass Appeal. We're wrapping up our show today with personal chef Bill Collins. ChefBill.com is your website. All show long, we've been making speedy meals that'll be great for the back to school time. Yes, well, speedy in a slow kind of way. Yeah. yeah. Because well, no, they're speedy, speedy to make, and then together. eight hours later, you get no to eat. No effort exactly. required. Really. Exactly. So uh, what I have here is the orzo. Now, this is not a TV orzo that I made hours and hours ago. This is what I started. Same uh, one? Same one. And so you saw it takes about 12, 15 minutes to, put, uh, to cook all the orzo up. All that remains now is uh, some Parmesan, uh -huh. healthy dose of peaches, yes, and even if you want just a little more Parmesan, because as we all know, Seth, Parmesan does not come from a green shaky can. No, it does not. And so uh, it comes this from a microplane and a heavy block of cheese. Exactly. So this is all oh, ready to go now. Man. N now, if you do this a little bit ahead of time, even just you know 10 or 15 minutes ahead of time, and you find it gets all clumpy because the the uh, pasta will continue to absorb the liquid, mm -hmm. that's okay. Just add a little more liquid, a little water or stock, okay. and that'll loosen it up a little bit. Okay. But aha, uh -huh. eight hours later. Yeah. Eight hours later, we happen to have. You see how when we started out, the chicken was on top. And that's how uh, much liquid uh, comes out of all this, that it, re it it settles in. You weren't lying. I wasn't lying, not this time. <laughs> now, so, uh, the bone in, though, how do we take the bone off safely so we're not you know, picking pieces out of our teeth Well, later? some people don't mind that. And so for those that do, oh, see, ooh, it's been cooking. It really know? does. It doesn't mind that. It, it pulls, oh, I don't mind. Really? So it's like flossing. <laughs> No, so yeah. what happens is uh, this one, because it's cooking so long, the bone really does pull right off. Wow. Otherwise, okay. you can kind of pry it off a little bit. But now, that's a large piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can cut it into whatever size portions you want. And uh, not only uh, does everybody get the amount of chicken they want, but also go a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. So now, because the camera's on, I'm just really shredding this up. <laughs> I can't uh, believe how easily that felt. I was always intimidated by bone in, thinking it was going to be a lot of work to cut it apart. But look at that, falls right off. It, Chef Bill, it sometimes what a is. beautiful meal. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank if you want a you. copy of this recipe, just visit us online, mymassappeal.com. Also, while well, we have the time, thanks to our friends.